بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Brothers and sisters and friends السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Quran, brothers and sisters and friends, in chapter 39, verse 29 says the following Allah propounds a similitude A man has several partners quarreling and a man the property of one are the two equal in likeness praise be to Allah but most of them know not they know not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the condition of a human being who is a slave to many slave masters and the condition of a human being who is a slave to only one and the one who is a slave to many slave masters these slave masters disagree with one another so whose condition is best? now what's very interesting if we reflect upon the Quran the Quran does not assume freedom the Quran Assume slavery Now this is a very negative word But think about this brothers and sisters and friends We're all slaves Every single one of us are in a state of slavery But we know not as Allah says the Quran Think about it Did you choose your birth? Did you choose your place of birth? Did you choose your siblings? Did you choose your DNA? Did you choose the system that was created around you? Did you choose the society in which you were brought up in? Did you choose your parents? You didn't even choose your name. You didn't even choose your nationality, your ethnicity. You didn't choose your eye color, your skin color. You didn't choose the first few years of your upbringing that was so critical for your cognitive development you had no choice zero so from this perspective you're enslaved to these things just like the existential philosophers they would say thrownness that the human being is thrown into reality with no choice it is no wonder the American writer once wrote that your birth, my birth, our births was like being born and then kidnapped and then sold into slavery because you had no choice. Now don't say to me, oh I have a choice. I could walk into the mall and I can choose between the cat hill shoe and the flat hill shoe. I have a choice, so I'm free. This is delusional. Let me explain with an example. I used to be a project manager. We used to have a personal assistant. She was a nice lady. And she used to wear some funny shoes. And me being who I am, I was quite intrusive. And I would ask her the question, why are you wearing those shoes? She would be startled. What do you mean? Because your heels are in pain. She had plasters, there was blood. Surely you didn't buy them for comfort. And she replied, well, they make me feel good about myself. So I didn't stop there. I intruded further. And I asked her the question, why do you think it makes you feel good about yourself? So the questions continued. And do you know what she said at the end while taking off her shoes? She said, because other people think I look nice. She's enslaved to the perceptions of others, to the construct of beauty permeating this materialistic culture. So when she was in the mall and she thought she was free to choose between the cat heel shoe and the flat heel shoe, she's actually enslaved to the perceptions of others. So she's a slave. And she's a slave to many slave masters, as Allah says in the Quran. Materialism, the system, your boss, your CEO, your teacher, your husband, your wife, your parents, your children. 
your politician, your education. You have all of these slave masters and they don't truly know what's good for you. And Allah compares that condition to the one who has one slave master. And you know who that is? Ibn Qayyum al Jawziyah said, the 14th century theologian, that the only way to attain freedom, to become a free slave, I know it's a paradox, but listen carefully, to become a free slave, then you worship Allah. The word for soul in the Quran is ruh, and it shares the same root as the word raha. Raha means serenity, liberty, freedom, peace. So it's as if the soul, the ruh, wants to achieve raha, and the only way it can achieve this is by worshipping Allah. He is our one slave master. He is our one Lord. He is our one master, our Rabb which means master and which means the one that loves you and the, ones that, the one that nurtures you and the one that knows you better than you know yourself. And he loves us. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that Allah loves you and me more than our mothers love us. Allah is Ar-Rahman. Do you know what Ar-Rahman means? Ar-Rahman is a very intense word. It's a immediate mercy. It's an excessive mercy. It's a powerful mercy that no one can stop. It's a boiling type of mercy. This is Ar-Rahman. This is Allah. Your Lord is a Lord of mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us he is our master and not only is he a rahman he is a lord of mercy but he knows you better than you know yourself and he wants good for you and he loves you so reflect on chapter 39 verse 29 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says compare the state of these two people the one with many slave masters and they all disagree with one another with the one who has one slave master who's in a better condition so when people think you're not free you don't have the freedom you're not liberated they're wrong because in reality you're a free slave and you found that freedom in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so brothers and sisters I'll end with this a practical note. Sisters, when you go out in the media and you're wearing hijab, don't fall for the false liberal narrative that you're wearing it because it's just your freedom. Maybe that's true. But why don't you have a more empowered narrative? Why don't you say this is a symbol of my emancipation? This is a symbol of my liberation through the worship of Allah. Because if you don't worship Allah, you're enslaved to a thousand slave masters and they don't know what's good for you and they're quarreling capitalism, liberalism, socialism, Darwinism, neoconservatism, idealism, realism, secularism all of these isms and schisms worshipping Allah makes you transcend these and this hijab is a symbol of your emancipation through the worship of Allah through the servanthood to the divine through enslaving yourself to Allah's will not to your own will because don't forget another form of slavery is our desires our ego and you're saying this is a symbol of being free from my ego being free from all of these, all of these slave masters being free from other people's perceptions of beauty this materialistic reductionist view on beauty that beauty is just whether you have nice arms or nice eyes but rather it's a holistic type of beauty that we should follow. Our deen is a deen of oneness and beauty in Islam is considered in its holistic oneness based on the inner and outer beauty, the energy, the spirituality of a human being, not just whether they have nice feet or nice eyebrows. 
So don't be enslaved to these notions. Show that you are liberated through the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that way, you're not incoherent. Because if you just always say that I'm wearing the hijab because I am free and it's based on freedom, then that means people wearing bikinis is fine in public. Obviously from an Islamic ethical perspective, we think this is unethical. Obviously we don't force ourselves on people. We articulate ourselves in a very compassionate and we suggest our moral viewpoint in a compassionate way. But I'm just trying to show that you become incoherent. Because if it's okay for you to use this kind of nonsensical notion of freedom, then you have to apply it to everybody else. But therefore that will go against your own ethical tradition. I'm not saying you don't have freedom, you don't have free choice, you probably do, but I'm trying to show you that be consistent. And if you really love for others what you love for yourself, really make them understand why you're wearing it in the first place. And believe me, it has nothing to do with materialistic notions of freedom or neoliberal notions of freedom. It's to do with the fact that you believe this book is from Allah. You do it because you worship and you love Allah. Brothers and sisters and friends, Allah, from a metaphorical perspective, has created a hole in our hearts. And every time we try and fill that hole with another ism or schism, another worldview ideology, with materialism, with the dunya, the ephemeral world, with money, fame, husband, wife, children, kids, possessions, there's another hole that appears. But once you fill that hole with the love of Allah, there are no more holes. So this Ramadan, and outside of Ramadan, reflect upon the Qur'an, understand whose slave you are, and when you realize that Allah is your master, you become a free slave. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.